All right, you alien assholes. Before we get into this video, I just want you to know that there is no vlogging kind of footage in this video, really. Unfortunately, I was going to vlog when I went out to, to the cinema to see this double bill, which you'll hear me talk about in just a second. But, um, yeah, I'll talk about why I didn't actually later on in the video, but just so you know, not to expect any kind of cool out and about footage, it just didn't happen. So, unfortunately, it's just me sat in front of the camera for probably about 20 minutes talking about shite. Hello, and welcome to another video where I've got no idea where it's going, but I'll be talking about Independence Days. Yes, plural. Independence Day and Independence Day, was it Resurgence or some shit like that? <laughs> like, that's actually the title of the film, isn't it? Terrible. Um, tonight is uh, Wednesday the 22nd of June, 2016, and I'm going to see an Independence Day sequel. Holy shit. Um, the original came out in uh, 1996, 20 years ago, uh, and I was a big like fan of the film when it came out. I got, I got it on VHS on my birthday, which is Independence Day, so I, I found it quite ironic. I was like, I've got Independence Day on Independence Day. <sighs> Wasn't much of an anecdote, was it? Okay, either way, I, I loved the film as a kid, so just, just brilliant. I mean, I'm a big Roland Emmerich fan. Uh, and it, it came from Independence Day, and and I still am. I still love Independence Day. It ain't a great film. It ain't a great film, and it is. I mean, it is just cringeworthy. Like you know, like that bit towards the end where they're like, the the British army soldiers are like, it's about bloody time the Americans saved the day. Like, oh for fuck's sake! And it's weird because it's so full of Americana. Yeah, it's directed by was it a German? You know, the Roland Emmerich. I don't know. Well, I suppose it's written by Americans, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, ever since Independence Day. You know, I followed Roland Emmerich along. You know, you go to, I mean, Godzilla. That is, that's, that's a bad film. I, I still enjoyed it, though. Uh, I did watch it again recently, before the new Godzilla, and it yeah, did not hold up, even to my nostalgic, enjoyed it for what it was as a kid standards. Um, but you go to The Day After Tomorrow. I adore that film. I think it's brilliant. I, I love it. I love End of the World disaster movies, and I think Day After Tomorrow is one of the best ones. 2012, not as good goes way overboard but again that's kind of the appeal to them i guess uh, even a film like san andreas last year which wasn't roland emmerich but it felt like it was um i just i don't know why i enjoy seeing the world get destroyed in many different ways but it looks like we're going to see even more global catastrophe in independence day 2 resurgence which um is coming out now and i'm going to see it tonight midnight screening um but i'm also going to be seeing the original get the thing right there i'm going to be seeing a double bill Bang! One after the other. Uh, 8.45 tonight, I'll be going to see Independence Day, the extended cut, which I've never seen before. They, they just came out with it on Blu-ray. Um, I think it's only about £7, so it's, I would have almost picked it up. But if I'm going to see the extended cut in the cinema, I'm not going to watch it again for another couple of years, so I'll probably wait until that's even cheaper. But I know they've done a new master of Independence Day. I still think that, that Blu-ray looks pretty good. But I'm not. I'm no like. I don't dissect all the kind of the, the contrast levels and everything. But um, I mean, I can tell when there's a bad transfer. But it seemed fine to me. But they've redone it. It looks amazing. They've even done a 4K version and the extended cut, which I've never seen. I'm really excited to see it tonight. I only found out earlier today that it was going to be the extended cut. So that's a big bonus. Uh, and it only it's only costing four quid to see both films. And it'll, it'll, it'll roll over to midnight when they will screen uh, the first showing of Independence Day 2. I'm going to call it. Um, and I think it's in 3D, which yeah, I wish it wasn't, but four quid for two films, you know, and I'm, I'm really excited to see the original on the big screen. That's going to be really cool. It's going to be a, a very small theatre, though, a very small um, amount of people in the theatre, though, because um, look at me saying theatre, cinema. There you go, Ian, if you're watching that, you know, I, I caught it before, it before it got out of hand, cinema. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll go to the store and get some candy after that. <laughs> anyway, um, so the cinema... I booked it and it's like there's about there's gonna be about ten people in there. I mean, it's it's a small it's a small cinema. It's a cinema right next to the Millennium uh, Stadium in what's well, not called that now, but the big stadium in Cardiff. Um, but it's four pound a ticket. You'd think more people would go, but then who's gonna go and see Independence Day two at midnight on a Wednesday? Me and one of my mates, Denzel, who's coming with me. He actually came with me to see the midnight screening of Terminator Five last summer, and it was the same thing. Same cinema, four quid, but. 
there's about four people in the room, so it's not going to be a bustling kind of, uh, you know, excited crowd to see this film. It's going to be very much a kind of, you know, but I'm sure I'm going to be pissing myself laughing at some of the bad lines in Independence Day. You know, there's, there's just so many of them. <laughs> but I can't wait to see it. I'm going to report back. Let you know what I thought. I might vlog a little when I go there. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. May even get Denzel to chime in on some of the stuff. But I'm very excited to see the sequel. It looks like hot garbage and I can't wait. <laughs> it just looks like almost the biggest mess you've ever imagined. But it could work. I don't know. The fact that they've got Jeff Goldblum coming back is a big plus. Um, you know, One of my favourite kind of 90s actors, Bill Pullman, coming back is great. Well, not even 90s, 80s as well. You know, Lone Star, uh, Spaceballs. And who else we got? We got. Then they're bringing back. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Data from Star Trek. I forget his name now. I forget the guy's name. Ah, oh, what's his the guy's name? But he's in. He was in the first one. He's in the sequel. Um, and so yeah, they're bringing back some characters. But I mean, it just looks like you know every time Roland Emmerich makes a big disaster movie, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And spoilers in 2012, th there's literally a scene where the, the, the sea comes up to like Mount Everest, and it, it just goes ridiculous. You know. And I feel, and seeing the the trailer for Independence Day two, this thing just like clamping down on the Earth or some shit, like it just looks so ridiculous, and I cannot wait to see it. So let's get rolling. I'm going to be leaving in about an hour or so. And I'm going to pack up on some snacks and go see these two films. Hopefully, I'll be able to stay awake because it's going to be five hours of Independence Day because I know that the first film was like an hour and two hours and a half, and then the extended edition is about ten minutes longer. Hopefully there'll be a, a bloody break in between. There must be, because if there's like three and a, three hours and a quarter from when the first film starts to midnight, so there must be copious amounts of adverts, obviously, but also there should be some kind of break in the middle. Um, it bloody better be anyway. So, yeah, fingers crossed it'll be all right. But I'm looking forward to it, and I hope to bring you along, hopefully. If not, I'll just talk more about my thoughts afterwards. Or maybe not. Maybe this video will get so long that I'll just do a separate review. I just don't know at this point. Um, making videos here at home is it, quite kind of slapdash at the minute. I'm not really in my groove, my normal groove, so we'll see what happens. Uh, and yeah, Independence Day coming right up. And then the sequel, Resurgence. I, I think that's what it's called, but it, it's it's something similar, if not. So. All right, so this, these are my cinema 5 plus hour ready healthy munchies yes i mean this is this is the best stuff in the world for you obviously um got some fruit salad and blackjacks i mean that they're just the best got some chocolate here freddo fudge yorkie raisin and biscuit can't get much better than that got uh, some red hots these turn out to be great can of dr pepper can of the best drink in the world ever ka fruit punch that's just it's just phenomenal and then, of course, the trusty vanilla Coke, which I'll be finally cracking open tonight. And the one and only Doritos Chili Heat Wave, which is probably one of the main things I miss when I'm not in the UK. And I'll be trying to stuff it all into this, this bag, my New York bought cheap satchel. And off to the cinema we go. All right, it's a few days later. It's a few days later from the Independence Day double bill. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I didn't film any out and about stuff. I could have, but um, I was meeting up with one of my best friends, Denzel, to go and see this double bill. And it was a, it was a choice of either vlog some of the stuff as I was going to the cinema and stuff, or, you know, take the time to kind of catch up with one of my best friends and, uh, you know, on life and also just on movies, things that we'd seen over the past six months. We haven't seen each other since, uh, I guess, December. So it's always the same when, you, when you're when you away from home for so long and you don't see people for ages and then you come back and you've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So I didn't want to just kind of um, interrupt that with, you know, uh, the distraction of making a video. So it is what it is. I'll give you my thoughts now uh, on the double bill. Uh, we, we kind of parked the way uh, away off from the cinema so we walked through a part of Cardiff to get to the cinema itself only about a five minute walk and we went underneath this bridge and I felt something fall you know like just a bit of rain or something down my arm and my the side of my head and I looked at my arm and it looked like what I could only describe as a big glob of shit uh, it wasn't shit 
<laughs> I don't know what the fuck it was, but I, I instantly wiped it off with my jumper, which was now unusable. Um, but luckily I didn't really need it in the cinema because the screening room was, was kind of quite cool uh, and kind of a little bit warm as well. It was like a perfect temperature, so I didn't need to have an extra layer of clothing. Nonetheless, I had all this gunk on my arm and it really pissed me off. So that's something I'll probably never forget about this experience. And I, it was, it, I, yeah, it was all right once I wiped it all off. And luckily none of it actually went on my, my head. It felt like it did. It might have just graze my ear or something. But yeah, some really disgusting stuff fell from a bridge on top of me that night before we even got to the cinema. So that was annoying. Anyway, we get to the cinema and the film had pretty much started straight away. Um, there was about five minutes of trailers and bam, right into Independence Day, 8.45 p.m. on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 2016. And I was like, wow, okay, so we're only getting the trailers, no adverts, that's pretty cool. And I thought, well, they're probably going to just like overload us for like 40 minutes of trailers and adverts before the new film. You know, that we'll have the original film, we can enjoy that, and then it'll be like, here's all the adverts in a massive chunk before we get to the midnight screening of Resurgence. But there wasn't. There wasn't. The first film ended, and obviously we sat through the entire credits. Some people went outside and probably had a, a smoke or a break or bought another drink or something like that, and then came back in. And so we, we had like a 30-minute break where nothing was, was being shown on the screen, and then BAM! Independence Day resurgence straight away. I mean, I can't fault View Cinemas for this. Um, Four pound to see a brand new film in the midnight screening um, an extended cut of a film that came out 20 years ago, no adverts, and only a couple of trailers. Like, holy shit. I mean, the, the value for money there is, is unbelievable. I couldn't believe that we weren't, gonna, we weren't getting bombarded with, with ads and stuff. Um, it, I don't know if it was the fact that there were only a few people in the cinema, and they thought, well, there's no point showing so many adverts. I don't know how it works, but, um, yeah, there wasn't that many people in there. There was more people than I was expecting. There might have been about 20, 25 people in there. Um, when, when me and Denzel uh, went to see the midnight screening of Genesis, Terminator 5, last year, there was about probably eight people in the, in the cinema. And it was the same cinema as well, View Cinema in Cardiff. But there was quite a few people there, and they staked out the whole thing, so that was pretty cool. Um, so... Seeing the original on the big screen uh, was was incredible. I just and it was so 90s, it was unbelievable. And me, me and Denzel were commenting on the fact that at the beginning of the film, obviously it's jumping around. Well, it always jumps around to different locations, but at the beginning of the film, you get in all these different locations, all these different characters all around the world reacting to this this news that these this alien threat is coming. And so whenever you cut to a new location, the screen would just go completely white, and it would be like, and then it would fade into like the new location. But then they just went overboard with it, and it was like, you know, New York, pfft, Statue of Liberty, tsh, Statue of Liberty's book, tsh, Jeff Goldblum playing chess, tsh, like, it was ridiculous, like, there should have been an epilepsy warning before this film, like, I was like, did this happen before? I think Denzel said, I don't remember this on the VHS, um, <laughs> I just did not recall that amount of strobing in the, the, the establishing shots, but it, it calmed down after about 20 minutes, thankfully. The extended cut, I didn't really enjoy that much. Uh, it was cool seeing new scenes from a film that I've grown up with for the past 20 years, but I don't feel like they added that much. Like, um, there's a scene in the film, uh, as I've known it, where Randy Quaid's uh, character is driving his RV with his family, and his younger son's like, pull over, pull over! And he gets out and he, he pukes up in the road. And I always thought that was because he was so uh, uh, you know, nervous and anxious and scared of this alien threat that he just had to throw up because he was so, you know, in terror, basically. But no, we get the whole medicine subplot in the extended cut. It's the medicine. He needs medicine. He's sick. There's all these scenes about him needing medicine and he's ill and it's alluded to that his mother died because she was sick too and he has the same illness and when they arrive at Area 51, Randy Quaid's like, my son needs help! And he's like, charging through the thing and grabbing scientists, my, my son's gonna die! And they're like, okay, we'll give him, we'll give him the medicine, you know, like, it was, it was okay. Uh, and then also Randy Quaid's daughter, who was the, the eldest daughter in Mrs. Doubtfire, I believe the actress' name was Lisa Jacob, uh, she had this little kind of subplot where this kid was saying to her, I think in the original film, he's like, this might be our last night on Earth, want to die a virgin do you and she almost seems to be buying into it until her older brother yanks her out of the car and then the a new scene at the very end is this new guy that she's met uh also in the extended cut and and she's like i don't want to die a virgin if it's our last night on earth and he's like it's okay we'll both die as virgins together and it's like oh my god but the thing i didn't like about the extended cut is that it wasn't edited edited very well 
Uh, some of the scene, some of the scenes fit in like a glove. There's a really good scene with uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum and Brent Spiner on the alien ship towards the end, of Area 51, and he's showing Jeff Goldblum around and saying, "Oh, this is what we found." And uh, these are the alien seats. We don't know how they sit on that, but anyway, <laughs> um, and uh, don't touch anything. And then he leaves, and Jeff Goldblum, like, why is everyone telling me not to touch anything? So he just he just touches the dashboard. Then he's like, wait, wait, wait. you know, like a real kind of Jeff Goldblumy kind of moment. Uh, and yeah, but some of the, some of the uh, some of the new scenes or new shots, even just the, these little tiny beats. Like there's some there's some funny ones, you know, that are kind of thrown in there. There's another exchange between uh, Jeff Goldblum and his dad inside the the Oval Office in the White House, just like an extra little line. But when these tiny little bits get added in, it's kind of plonked into a scene which has a lot of momentum, and the music is going along with it, like dun 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 dun, 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 dun. and then it kind of dun, 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 dun. new scene, yeah, dun, 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 that kind of thing. Rough approximation, but they, they, they was kind of choppily like placed in there. Uh, I don't know how they, they could have done it better. I mean, the, I feel like the fading could have been done a little bit more smoothly. It just seems to just drop out, and then you know the new scene would get plonked in, and then the new you know. So th that, I didn't really like that aspect of it, but it's cool seeing new scenes. But I don't feel like anything really added to it overall. Uh, in particular, uh, I'm not sure if I'll watch it again. Probably, maybe in the future, years in the future. Uh, I now I now don't need to pick up the extended cut Blu-ray though because I'm not going to be want to watch this film for a few years anyway. So that's a plus. I'm glad that they screened it in the cinema. It was cool to see. Also, just the fact that it was this '90s film, all the bells and whistles, and all the kind of special effects that are dated terribly. Like holy shit! I I mean, obviously. You look at a film on VHS, you look at a film in the cinema, it's going to look a lot more clearer and crisp. You're going to see a lot more of the image and, uh, or, you know, see more details, I should say. Uh, man, it just, it felt like when I watched it as a kid that the special effects were the greatest thing in the world. Now they're like, wow, it's, it's almost laughably bad. Um, they have cool models that they blow up and stuff, but there's some, some early 90s CGI that is perhaps not the greatest. Um, I mean, it's not really bad, but it's noticeable how lacking it is, you know. Um, you see a film like Jurassic Park, which, which really nailed it and kind of really still stands up today because it was used so sparingly, whereas it's a lot in this film um, and some of it just doesn't hold up. Anyway, the, 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 the dialogue is still cheesy as hell. Um, I almost was disappointed because Bill Pullman, who's I've mentioned before, I love him, but in the first few parts of this film, watching it in the cinema, I was like, wow, Bill Pullman's not really given a good performance here, you know, or all my dreams being shattered. But by the time you get to his speech at the end, and even Denzel said to me, so I was thinking, you know, nah, it's it's not going to get me. It's not going to get me this time. It's you know, it, it was it was cool when I was a kid, but it, it's not going to. But it, yeah, you know, it's just like <laughs> it's such a great speech, such a great movie moment. You know, it's it's over the top. It's Americana, but it's also you know uh, delivered perfectly by Bill Pullman. Like he really just he just really gets the level right. He doesn't go way too much too soon. He doesn't keep it too low key. He just seems to perfectly hit all the, the beats that you need to with that with that great speech. Um, now the film itself, you know, I'm always gonna love it. I'm always gonna laugh at it. I'm always gonna cringe at it. I'm always gonna face palm and shake my head. But I'm I'm always gonna love it, and it was really no different in the cinema. Oh, sorry, my nose is really itching. I just cannot stop the fact that I have to keep rubbing it. But yeah, uh, overall, it was an amazing experience seeing this film in the cinema. I loved it, and and just you know laughing and shaking our heads along the way was was part and parcel with that as well. So we had the break, waiting for the for the next film. And we enjoyed sitting through the Independence Day credits because um, it's like <laughs> CGI artists. It's about five people on the list. <laughs> I was like, man, can you imagine what that list is going to look like in the second film? Uh, and we were just looking at funny names and, and kind of came up with the revelation that if you just look at a, a film's credit list for long enough, you'll find some really good wrestler names. And lo and behold, <laughs> someone who worked on Independence Day, Steve Austin, <laughs> it came back around and, and that was just great. Um, <laughs> So we had fun watching the credits as well. Uh, the second film started, um, and I've done a review of that on my channel, which kind of sums up sums up a lot of my thoughts. But overall, you know, I I really enjoyed it. I almost loved it. Uh, it wasn't quite as 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 I don't know. It didn't have that element from the original, I think. And sometimes you can't recreate certain eras. I think like an '80s film, you just can't do it again and be like an '80s film. And it's almost the same with '90s films now. Um, it's because, I don't know, it just doesn't have the same feel. But it, it did have a lot of the same feel as Independence Day. You know, there was the the, the one-liners, you know, the 
tons of characters, loads of things going on, global kind of um, you know side plots and things like that. Um, big action, big exposition. You know, uh, a lot, there's a huge exposition team in this film, comprised of like Jeff Goldblum, Brent Spiner, and uh, the, the the I think it was a French woman. Uh, the new cast was good. I thought Liam Liam Hemsworth was pretty good. The guy who played Will Smith's stepson was really good. Uh, Make him Monroe was really good. I, I kind of wish Mae Whitman had come back from the original film to be in it, but um, it seems to be up in the air and not really clear whether she decided not to come back or she wasn't considered and was you know re recast by a you know quote unquote hotter actress. I don't know if that's that's true, but there was certainly an outrage about it when it was announced, um, not just by fans, but by people in the entertainment industry as well. Either way, I thought she did a great job regardless. It was great seeing Jeff Goldblum back. He was a lot of fun. But Bill Pullman was the one for me who really, um, uh, maybe not stole the whole show, but was, was kind of the thing that I enjoyed the most about the film. I loved his performance at the beginning when you see how he's been affected from the events of the first film and how his connection with the aliens when they kind of showed him. They had that kind of mind meld almost where he saw what they were thinking, the collective in the first film, after 20 years, this has really like ground, ground him down basically and he keeps having these visions and things. And there are other people who've had visions as well and that kind of plays in with Brent Spiner's character, Dr. Oakham, who was like a main character in this film. Like he's, he's all over it and um, he was quite fun too. I liked his performance, especially towards the end. Uh, a nice emotional beat for him and his character. And that's what I think films like this are good at doing. They just have all this fun, all this cheese and these one-liners and these action explosions and stuff. And they kind of build the characters up as they go along. And then they pay it off with, with kind of emotional moments that, you know, um, are almost a lot better than the film itself when you look at all the, the rest of the moving parts and things like that. But uh, Bill Pullman, yeah, uh, I thought he was brilliant. And... I loved his character's arc and where it ended up going from the beginning to the end and his relationship with his daughter and it was great just to see Bill Pullman back in a big film like this, I really enjoyed that. Um, and that's about it really, yeah, I, I just had a lot of fun with it. You know, it did a few things I wasn't expecting, it did a few things that blew me away visually. Uh, it's not a great film, neither is the original, but I had a blast watching it and I think I'll enjoy it more the next time because, again, during this double bill, I'd been sat down in the same seat for about five and a half hours because uh, the first film's like two and a half hours plus. Then we had the half hour break and then another two hours. So my back was really aching towards the end, but I made it through and really enjoyed it. And we did look, we did sit through most of the credits just to see. And it was just like so many subsections of v VFX artists, as there should be, because uh, there's probably a thousand effect shots in, in that film, if not more. Um, you know, it's 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 just completely like addled with with digital effects, uh, which a lot of them were great. I, I thought the film looked fantastic. Um, they definitely nailed that part of it. I do wish that uh, Jeff Goldblum's dad in the in the second film, played by Judd Hirsch, I really loved his introduction. It was hilarious, but I feel like his character was. I said this in my review was kind of squandered in a a subplot which wasn't really. Uh, it felt like it had stuff deleted. It wasn't as fleshed out, you know, to kind of uh, feel. By, by the payoff. The payoff to his subplot in the film with the kids um, was nice and sweet, but it felt like it needed more to, su to support it, you know? I'd love to see an extended cut of this. I really would love to see a two and a half hour version of this film. The pacing is so fast, obviously it's a sequel, but I feel like um, they could do with some more padding just to either take a breath or to get a bit more information, you know, um, but there's a lot of information thrown at you anyway. Uh, and these kind of films, they're just fun and I had a blast. So that's about it. The double bill was awesome. It was a great experience. I love that I did it. Um, and it's the first one of these kind of movie marathons I've done. I've never done more than one film in the cinema at one time. So, I mean, I've, I've done a cinema day where I've gone and watched loads of different films, you know, but like, you, but you go in, you see a film, you walk out, you get to stretch your legs, and then you wait half an hour or whatever, but this was, you know, you sat in the same place, the first time I'd done it, had a lot of fun, I don't think I'd be able to do one of these big, like, Star Wars 1 through 7, I think that would kill me in my back, I don't think I could do that, but um, now I get a taste of what it's like, um, so, and I had to kind of ration my snacks as well, which is kind of interesting, because I had to kind of pace myself, but by the end I realised I've been snacking pretty much consistently for about four, four and a half hours, this is terrible. Terrible. I'm going, my stomach is going to explode. What am I doing to my body? Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this kind of, uh, this, this tale of my double bill. There was no out and about, no vlog of it really, but it is what it is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So you might say he's a really nice guy, really. But if fucking don't catch it with me. He says he's really cool. But I think he's a tool. <laughs> <laughs>